I'm living proof that we all have the skills and the knowledge to build a business. What always drew me was the freedom and the business ownership. I'm responsible for my own life, no, no one else is. And if I don't make my own decisions for myself, someone else is gonna do it for me. This job, the people and the job and where I worked, stripped me down to nothing. And my advice to you would be, if you're in a job like that, run the other way. Welcome to The Handmade Bosses Show. I'm Steph and my mission is to help you start, run and scale an online handmade business and build a creative life you love. I went from being in a nine to five that I absolutely hated to running my six figure handmade business in less than a year. So bosses, let's help you get your amazing products out there and get the sales you deserve. Hi guys, welcome back to The Handmade Bosses Show. So I thought today I would do a quick little rundown of my story. So my story, and I'm not gonna lie, I have recorded this video two times in the past year, but I've never put it up because, you know, it wasn't a very kind of like nice time for me in my life. And it's really hard for me to talk about, not in a, emotional kind of way but just I just never like I, I like to keep everything every content I put out I like to keep it uplifting and positive joyful happy but this is a story where especially in the beginning it's not so much that <laughs> so I'm gonna do my best and I've just decided that I'm just gonna do it whatever it turns out like it's gonna turn out like that and that's it so I hope that you enjoy this and you get a little, little bit more of a backstory into me and my business and everything like that. So I have been in the jewelry trade. I'm going to start right, right from the beginning. I have been in the jewelry trade for many, 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 many years. And I feel like I was kind of pushed into the jewelry trade. And I'll explain. I have started businesses since I, since I was five five years old um, my dad's always been very entrepreneurial minded um, and I remember we went to Staples when I was five and we bought a pack of a hundred rulers for a pound you know like the normal 30 cent me a clear rulers that you used to get right and I bought a box of a hundred for a pound right I went, I went to school and I sold them for like 25p each or 50p each or something like that right and that was the earliest memory that I can think of. I, I'm doing air quotes, but running a business <laughs> or having some kind of experience in buying something for one price, selling it on for another. OK, so I deep, deep, deep down, I've always known that business has been in in me, in my soul, in my blood. It's always been something that I've wanted to do. Um, and as you grow up, you know, you go through school, you know, well, you're expected to go through school, you're expected to go to college, you're expected to, to go to uni, you're expected to find a good job and work there until you retire and ultimately die. Yes, that's a very <laughs> heavy topic to start this episode off, but I just really wanted to give like a bit of a backstory. So as I kind of like grew up, um, I was, I, I kind of, I, I knew deep, deep down, if I really thought about it, that business was what I wanted to do. I wanted to have my own business and have the freedom that that entails. But I think instead what I did is I gravitated towards careers that would offer that for me. Well, I thought it would. So I, uh, you know, at one point I, well, I wanted to be a vet because I thought, well, they get the money to be able to work part time if they want to, and that's kind of, you know, and I wanted my own practice. And then I wanted to be a freelance wedding photo photographer. And then I wanted to be a forensic scientist. I don't know where that came from, but I actually went to college to learn that. So you never know, but, <laughs> um, and it was just, I just thinking back now when I was in it, I was just lost. I didn't kind of know what I wanted to do. I was interested and good at, you know, a lot of things, but never 
was drawn to any of them I kind of just thought that I'd find my passion along the way for a lot of these things but obviously as you know that doesn't happen so you know I got to sort of like 16 and and I remember wanting to do my work experience in a wedding dress shop because I wanted to learn about having a small business and you know really get to grips with a person that had done it right but I remember, and I went to an all-girls school, so, you know, think of this what you will, but I I I remember my teacher saying, yeah, you you can do that, but, you know, do bear in mind that you'll probably never own your own business, because it's hard, and and I was like, what do you mean? I thought we were were told that we could do anything, and and I always... (sighs) My husband works for a school now and they're so different in how they they teach things. But when I was at school, the way I viewed it was that you're told everything's lovely and rainbows, unicorns until you you hit like age 14, 15, 16, when like the real stuff starts to set in. And the thing that you thought you could do and you're always encouraged to do, you, you know, you're then like, that's not a real job. You have to get a real job. And it's so sad because, you know, when you're that age, you don't have, you know, you don't have any mind blocks, do you? You haven't done anything. You haven't failed at anything. So you're kind of fresh and clean. If that makes sense, your mindset is kind of like fresh and clean until you get people coming in and saying, no, you can't do that. You have to get a real job. And I know that from chatting to you guys that, you know, for those of you that took art and stuff like that in school, drama, you know, you always told that you couldn't make it a real job and you could, you know, there, there were never any jobs and it was all, it was all pants basically. So yeah, that was, <laughs> that was kind of me. Um, I remember specifically a moment in time where I got very angry um, and it was a very angry time in my life and, and it was an event that happened where I was in class and it was a geography class in my all girls school and I remember him basically because I was a bit of a at that point I was a bit of a tyrant in class I, I did get good good grades and stuff like that but I just I was just bored I didn't want to be there I was just very antsy I, I just something wasn't right and I couldn't put my finger on it and I, rem- and I remember um, we were doing a study of uh, people, you know, like when, when you when you go back to like the 1400s where people would like um, settle in areas with like rivers and, and, and greenery and stuff, stuff like that. And we were like looking at the areas where people were going and stuff like that many, many hundreds, hundreds of years ago, right? So um, we were doing that, we were talking about that And the geography teacher was like, well, you do know that a woman's really primary aim is to get pregnant, have kids, and then raise them. And then that's it. The life work is done. And I remember being so angry about that. I remember being just super like let down. I felt like it's kind of how I would imagine um, someone you know, like when you see these films and like you, you, you know, these are really ridiculous fiction films where someone gets cloned for the pure purpose of like doing something that they didn't think they were going to do. That sounds really, really vague, but um, it's like when you feel like you were created for one purpose and then you find out later on, however many years later, 15, 16 years later, that that's not what you're destined to do. And it was kind of one of those moments where I was just like, I just got angry and I was like, no, like that's not right. I want to change this. And I remember walking home from school and it was the last lesson of the day, walking home from school and being like, I want to change this. I want to change this. I don't like this. This is not right. And I remember going on, on like a run and my friends at the time like couldn't care less. They they were just like teenage girls that just wanted to just go home, put their feet up, have a snack and watch the Simpsons when they got home. (laughs) Um, But anyway, that was kind of the beginning of the, of the end of my kind of business, like me being in touch with what I really wanted. So anyway, we, I I went to college and I didn't like that. I realized about a year in that I hated it, but I was encouraged to carry on. Um, I'd had like little jobs and stuff like that to earn pocket money and stuff like that. And then 
basically, I'm going to fast forward to uh, when I got my job, which really impacted. And this was the real crux. Okay, so um, I'm trying to think back what year it was. I can't quite remember what year I joined, but I was there for about two years and I left the job in April 2016. So... 2014 must have been the end of 2013 beginning of 2014 anyway if I get any of those years wrong I'm sorry I just can't think back that far and also it's funny it was quite a traumatic it's not traumatic that's not the word for it because that sounds really dramatic but it was a very bad time in my life I don't particularly like talking about it in depth I just tell you guys it was a job that I hated and that's kind of where I leave it but the kind of impression that you've probably got of me, younger me so far, was that I was very outgoing, I was very bubbly, I was very extroverted. Um, I was always the, the one who would be like, come on guys, we can do this, let's like lead the pack and let's do... That was always who I was until I was at this job, right? And I had three jobs after, I, uh, four jobs after I left school. This was the fourth and last job that I've had before doing what I do now. And... I joined and I was fine and I was bubbly and I was ready to learn and at the time um, I was doing a, di- a diploma in gemology which, which if you don't know is basically the study of gems and I could ID them I could like you know I could tell that they've been like treated heated oiled what they were whether they were glass paste diamonds diamond grading and the whole idea for me was to go and do jewelry valuations that was the kind of idea for me well when I say idea it was something that my family and friends had kind of ushered me into not really pushed but kind of ushered me into because it was a quote-unquote stable job We have been having some great conversations so far on today's episode, but I've got something even more special for you. You know what it takes to be shown on page one on Etsy, right? Yep, you guessed it, increasing your conversion rate. My three-step framework to skyrocket your Etsy conversion rate is my signature free masterclass. And boss, I'm saving a spot for you. Learn how to increase your conversion rate in three easy steps, as well as the top three mistakes I see Etsy shops make on a daily basis. Sign up in the show notes or head to handmadebosses.com forward slash conversion. That's handmadebosses.com forward slash conversion, C-O-N-V-E-R-S-I-O-N to claim your spot. Now let's get back to the episode and I can't wait to see you there, boss. So... I was essentially kind of pushed into this job that I didn't really want. Um, But it's funny how when you spend a lot of time thinking that you want something and being told that you want something, you kind of start to believe it yourself. So, and then don't get me wrong, I love jewellery, but as you'll get to know later on, I loved the business side of it. And that's what I craved throughout my entire life when I was doing learning different things, wanting to be different things. What always drew me was the freedom and the business ownership aspect of it, right? So I joined I joined this job and this job, the people and the job and where I worked, stripped me down to nothing. Stripped away my sense of self, stripped away my sense of pride stripped away my sense of you know being bubbly being extrovert it stripped away my hope it stripped everything away from me and I ended up being this shell of a person that I always was and this was done through um you know so I was doing this uh diploma at the time and it was costing me 600 pound a month to spread the cost. I think it was like it's like 15 18,000 that I had to spend to do this and I spread it out, you know, over a, a few years. So I had to get a job and that was the kind of, you know, in influx into it. So it stripped me down and I no longer knew who I was. I no longer knew what I liked. I no longer knew who I wanted to be. I just knew nothing. And it, you know, this was done through the owner of the shop. It was like a little independent jewelers. 
he would make derogative jokes you know i'm not going to go too far into it but there was there was jokes you know i i was i was called fat on a daily basis and i mean not just little i mean actually like called fat um i would i would be told that i'm stupid i'm a dumb blonde i don't know anything and even though i was you know i i would go home at night and, and learn and do my my diploma and then come back and be like hey so i've learned this and and the plan for me was to go into being the shop's diamond grader gem ident identifier that's a word and basically do what i was learning in the shop well that ne that never happened that never happened not an inkling was said that that was ever going to happen right so it was kind of one of those where i'm sure you guys have been in jobs like that before where you're promised the earth when you join and then like two years later it's still not happened my advice to you would be if you're in a job like that run the other way but anyway <laughs> i'm not going to give you career advice i've had a lot of regrets in my life and one of them was that job and the other one was going to college and doing further education but i'm not here to tell you to quit college or do anything like that i'm just saying for me it wasn't right but for you it may well be so don't think i'm here i'm out here telling people to to you know leave leave college and all that sort of stuff that's not what i'm doing so i was in this job that i absolutely hated i was stripped down to literally nothing i was just a shell of a person and i would be at work and i would go into the stock room to get something and you know the shop was an absolute minefield of health and safety hazards like you know you'd you'd come out with, with like cuts where you'd walked past you know primarily the reason why i have like scars and stuff on my arm is because i'd get like cuts and stuff like that and then i you know sit and pick them because i was anxious and stuff like that um and i would just go into the stock room and just cry like i i would i would pretend to be looking for a box for a gift and i would just cry and i would just cry and cry and, cry. and i'm not a crier like i'm not the kind of person who cries a lot um but i was just this shell i was just nothing i was just this blob that you know was told that i was stupid on a daily basis and was told that i couldn't do anything right and you know i i i yeah that's it really i don't i don't want to go too far into it to be quite frank but i'm sure that you guys have probably been in a job like that before where you feel like you're useless you feel like you're just there to fill a gap you feel like you're not you know you're not valued in any way shape or form and this was at independent jewelers i.e there was like less than 10 people working there i can't imagine you know what you guys must be going through if you're in a massive corporation that has got like a hundred a thousand plus employees because damn <laughs> um so anyway i i was just stressed i was depressed i was anxious I just went downhill really really quickly in that in that job and it was just my mindset it was like on a permanent loop because i was going to work for nine hours a day being told i was garbage i knew nothing i was fat i was ugly i was a dumb blonde because of that it was like this repetitive mindset loop where i would just tell myself that that was true over and over again you can imagine the kind of person that i were I, I i was after like a few months of this right so anyway um i started to get really really sick i started to get a lot of colds a lot of flus and stuff like that and it was just like it was just a lot more than a person should be getting ill you know i was getting ill every three weeks pretty much on the dot and it was like chest inf infections and it was just nasties it was just real things i was like something's not right anyway so I started to get like really sick after I ate, like tummy aches. I just didn't feel right until one day um, I came into work and I just looked like an absolute ghost, like completely pale. I just, you know, and I kept running to the toilet and coming back and being like, oh God. And then, um, you know, I wasn't allowed any like time off kind of thing to go and like rest at home. So it was, it was only when like that day when I was like, you know, without being too visual like having to run to the toilet every three minutes to be ill um and it was just like 
one of those where I got sent home and you know I, I was I had to get a bus home because no one was around to pick me up and I passed out on the bus missed my stop had to then get off like two stops later and then you know went to the doctors got rushed to a and e and had to have an emergency op and I remember like being you know you know when you're on that bed and you just see the strip lights just going vroom 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 I remember lying there looking up and being like, I don't have the energy to be worried about what's happening to me. I don't have the energy to care. I don't have the, you know, whatever happens to me happens, whatever. And that is a real big, that was like a real (laughs) wake up call for me. Because I suddenly realised that the person who'd never had an op before, who was always scared of, you know, being ill, whatever, I just didn't have the energy to care anymore. And I remember, I, remember, I remember being like, whatever, like whatever happens to me happens. And that's that, isn't it? Because life is just crap right now. It's just so bad right now. So anyway, um, I uh, woke up from that, you know, when you're bleary eyed and you kind of like wake up and you're like, you, you, no matter how many times you're blinking your eyes, everything's still blurry. And you're just, you just feel really tired, don't you? After an op. Um, I remember woke up and being like, I'm not going to waste this. Like I'm not going to waste this chance that I'm that I'm still here and I'm not I'm not going to waste this at all. You know, I'm I'm not going to take this for granted anymore. I'm not going to be the person that d- doesn't care what happens to me because I'm responsible for my own life. No no one else is. And if I don't make my own decisions for myself, someone else is going to do it for me. And someone else did before that is (laughs) someone else did they decided that I was going to do jewelry valuations they decided that I was going to give up on my dreams of having a business they decided I was going to work in this job they decided my entire life and I remember waking up and being like nope not happening nope and it's kind of like I got my sense of self back and there was a little glimmer and then it went a bit brighter and a bit brighter as the months wore on I'm going to get into that in a second this was the turning point for me so um I had to be on three weeks bed rest and you know it's a real mind f because you're sat from like 8 a.m to 11 p.m staring at a wall there's only so much Facebook you can scroll through especially back then because it was you know quite young wasn't it well I wouldn't say Facebook was young but it was you know it was not as it is now (laughs) so I should have said maybe that I had opened up my jewellery shop um I want to say about three four months before and I I actually had my own website I didn't even have an Etsy shop at that point and I got a few sales through my website but I kind of felt this renewed sense of hope and I was like I, I, I I I made a choice basically at that point that this I I was going to make this work I was going to make this work I don't care what I have to do and I think that when you've got a plan a b c and d in place (laughs) whether that's a job whether that's help from people you know whatever, whatever that is you won't try as hard because you're like well i've got this to fall back on but that moment that i made that choice that either i make this work or i go back to being ill and I go back to, you know, because I do strongly believe that the reason I was ill and my body was punished by my mind was because of my of my mindset and where I was. And I just feel like that moment where I was like, there is no choice. There is no choice. I can't go back to where I was because I will end up. I don't, I don't even want to say I, I don't I don't know where I would have then ended up, but certainly not here right now. So. I was kind of, um, before I I always had had like a plan A, B, C and D. So I never really tried that hard, if that makes sense. But, but now after the op, I was like, that's it. Like I've had enough. And I got my sense of anger back. And I think it's always good to have a little sense of being a little bit mad, right? A A little bit angry. So I kind of got that back and I was like, enough's enough. Like, no, this is not happening to me. And I think three weeks, that three weeks bed rest was an absolute saint. Because on the first week I opened my Etsy shop and I'm smiling because it was like, it ah, it was the beginning of the beginning for me. It was just this moment 
where I look back now and I, and I remember being like, this isn't a big deal, like whatever. But then I got my first sale and it didn't take that long. It took a couple of days. And I was like, in, in fact, I completely missed it because I didn't expect anything to come of it. I completely missed it. And I logged onto my shop and was like, oh my goodness, I got a sale like a week ago. Okay, I have to, you know, and I had to message the person being like, I'm so sorry, I've missed just your, your order. Um, so basically from that point on, for those three weeks, I learned everything. <laughs> I started my journey and, you know, from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m., learning continuously about Etsy and how my business was a long time. So I spent those three weeks doing that. Then I eventually had to go back to my job because my bed rest was up. Um, so I went back to my job and I was like, no, it's not going to be the same as it was before. I couldn't change those people. That's the thing. I couldn't change the people who were by just telling me all this rubbish, telling me I'm garbage, telling me I'm fat, telling me I'm, I couldn't change those people because you can't change people. People are people, but you can change you. And that's exactly what I did. I changed my mindset. I put up a barrier and it's weird. Like my business, my Etsy shop was this barrier that I put up and everything they said to me deflected off of it because it was always a case of I don't care what you think of me. I really don't because I'm not going to be here soon because I know that my shop, you know, I've, I've given myself like this one option and the one option is to have my own business. So I know that I'm not going to be here much longer in this job. So it was, it was just, it's the sense of renewed hope and the sense of worth. I think that this was. So basically for the next, um, wow, for the next, year I guess really because it did take me you know it was basically I opened the shop in summer of 2015 which is when I had my op and then by April 2016 I'd left my job but it was kind of like a year really of like just continued learning and my routine looked something like this and this was every day when I went to work and when it was like weekends I'd, I'd just do it at home and so I, I woke up at like, it was either 5 a.m. or half five to get the bus to get to work on time, right? So I had an hour trip on the bus um, that left at 6 a.m. or half six. I can't, I can't remember what the time was. But for that hour, I would continuously learn. I would learn. And then I'd go to work in, in my job and I would, in my lunch break, I would do the exact same thing. And then when I came home, I'd do the, do the exact same thing. And then at night I would work on my shop and do orders. And that was my routine for about a year, okay? But how I learned was, you know, I did all the usual, I looked on like YouTube and stuff like that. I didn't really find anyone that was doing this how I wanted to do it, right? Which is why it inspired me to open my own YouTube channel and stuff like that. So anyway, um, the way I learn was I just critiqued four shots a day. I do one every half an hour. So two in the morning, two at night. And on my lunch break, I would just read my notes and just, you know, just watch stuff and all that kind of stuff. But basically I would pretty much critique four shots a day. And what I would do is I'd go on to any Etsy shop, whether it was a bad one, good one, medium one, whatever. And I would be like, right, what is good about this shop? What is bad about this shop? What would I do differently if I was the shop owner? Um, what target market do I expect this product to be aimed at? And I would literally just do that. And I would critique shops over and over and over and over and over again until I was so solid in what worked and what didn't work that I could go to my shop and know exactly straight off the bat what I needed to do. And, you know, when you're doing that for, <laughs> for a year, you become a bit of an expert because you're just filling your mind with this one thing over and over again. So anyway, um, so got my first few sales and got more sales and got more sales. And then it kind of dipped a bit and it wasn't growing as fast as I wanted it to. And then I kind of was like, I have to get strategic about this. That's exactly what I did. And fast forward to... Um, November, December of 2015, I think. Yeah, 2015, I left my job in 2016. Yeah, 2015, November, December, I made $6,000 over those two months. And I'm smiling because it was just 
that moment where you're like, I have hit on something. It's a real business. It's not just a hobby. It could be done and it would be done. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I I did have a lot of people in my life, friends, family, that were just not supportive, to be quite honest with you. Um, and I remember being told that, you know, costume jewelry doesn't sell uh people won't pay anything for it um that it wouldn't work and it would just be another passing phase and and you know I was like you know what again I can't change what people think but I can change me that's exactly what I did so basically it was like a moment where I looked down and I was using um my husband's iPad at the time and I was like you know I was taking that back and forth to work because trying to critique shots on like a little tiny phone screen was just impossible so I I used his iPad (laughs) I did break the screen in the end but I used the iPad before the screen was broken and I looked down on my on on the Etsy app and saw the number six thousand I think it was two hundred and something dollars and I was like that's like double, triple what I make in my job. And that was a time, like December, that was a time when I was like, oh my goodness, I've done this. Like me, little me, the person who thought they could do nothing right has done this, has done this thing. And it was just, I I love going back to that time because it was just the moment where it was just different and everything changed. So anyway, that was a time that December was like, right, that's it. I'm going to I'm going to leave my job. But it took me four months to do that because my job was the kind of job where people came in but never left. It was like you weren't allowed to quit. And I was so nervous. It took me four months to quit. That was Steph being a bit of a coward because I just couldn't do it. I just it wasn't it wasn't the money side of it that wasn't what it was it was the idea of letting people down in that job even though like the like 95 percent of them were just horrible to me i just felt nervous to go upstairs in my boss's office and quit and i was also worried that, that they'd ask what i'd be doing next and i I, you know, to this day, I never told them that I was building a business. I, I kept it a secret. I never, never told anyone because I didn't need them telling me it was rubbish and X, Y, Z. So in the 16th of April, 2016 was my last day. And I remember coming home and I, I was like, I've quit my job you know, that day was a really good sales day for me. And I remember like looking down at my phone screen on the Etsy app and being like, I can do this. Like, I, I'm gonna do this. And as they say, the rest is kind of history because it was that moment where, you know, it wasn't a hobby. It wasn't something that people were telling me that it was just a passing phase. It was something I could do. I could have the freedom financially and time. And basically, yeah, um, you know, between then and now, the business has, has has helped buy this house. It's bought me my car. It's bought me everything that I've needed to, to do. And then, you know, obviously you guys know that now I do Handmade Bosses because I was so passionate about the journey that I had gone through and, you know, hearing friends that were going through the same thing. And I was like, I have to help people I have to it's like going back to that 16 year old me when when my teacher said that women were just for having kids raising them and then that's it it was like a two-year-old stamping their feet in the ground and saying no that's no like I'm not going to stand for this I'm going to make change and that's exactly kind of what well it's not kind of it it is what handmade bosses is for we all have this special skill or knowledge to make something incredible and to build the life of our dreams whilst making that thing. We all have the skills and the knowledge. I'm living proof that we all have the skills and the knowledge to build a business. Whether you wanna knit, whether you wanna make candles, whether you wanna sell t-shirts, whether you wanna make plant pots, whether you, you know, whatever you wanna do, you, every single person listening, watching this right now has a special skill. I, 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 gu- I guarantee it. You all have this special skill that you can build into a business if you want to. That's exactly what I've done. 
And yeah, I guess that's kind of my story. At this point, we've helped hundreds of, well, probably thousands by now, people with their handmade business. And we are growing and my goal is to help people make <laughs> make their handmade business their full-time gig, like what I have done, to give people back their time, to give people back financial freedom, to give their sense of worth back to people. You can tell I'm passionate about this because I'm just hovering around this point. I just, I, I want you to feel the way I felt the day I left my job. I want you to feel the way I felt when I, you know, November, December, 2015, when I was looking down at the Etsy app and being like $6,000, like, wow, I've done that. I've achieved that. I want you to feel that way because it's a feeling like no other. And if you're watching this and you realize like me very, very quickly that you don't fit into the nine to five J-O-B model, that you don't like the idea of making money for someone else, that you feel like something has always been missing. You feel like you need to follow this dream, but you don't quite know what yet. You feel something niggling away at you, like it's this, this brain itch that you can't scratch. Because I have felt like you before, and I know, I know how much time it takes for you to just digest it and not know the answer. So that was my story, and I hope it wasn't too long. I hope it stayed interesting for you. Thank you so much for watching and taking interest and everything like that. And I hope that you will continue to grow your business. Don't give up. Yes, there are ups. Yes, there are downs. But there's times also where you think back and you think, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else with my time. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the show notes for some amazing freebies. I give a lot away guys and I give it away because I want you to succeed with your handmade business. <laughs> I will catch up with you guys soon. Have a fantastic week. Speak to you later. We really hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to check the show notes for some more helpful links and also a link to our website as well. Also, you can watch the video version of this over on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to get your free spot on our masterclass, the three-step framework to skyrocket your Etsy conversion rate at handmadebosses.com forward slash conversion. That's handmadebosses.com forward slash conversion. We would also love it if you could leave us a review on iTunes as it really helps us to reach more bosses in need. Subscribe to the show and we will see you on the next episode.